What's going on, y'all? It's Gum Gum TCG here, back again with another episode of Budget Builders. Uh, that's right. If you didn't check out yesterday's deep dive on Perona, go ahead and click this link above my head, or check out the link in the description below. Uh, we went over a couple different deck lists, and one of them being this budget list that I made for Perona. Now, if you don't know this leader, uh, it's very very strong. Uh, green black leader definitely makes a better leader than the Isha one we've had previously. Plays completely differently, and I think uses that color combination a lot better. Uh, and uh, I know a lot of people are wanting to play this, but Moria is going to be expensive on release unless it gets banned. Um, and Borsalinos are expensive. Like, there's a lot of expensive cards in this uh, deck. So, I wanted to make a list. Uh, if you've never checked out Budget Builders, we try to keep the deck under $50. And this list is right about under $50. Uh, I try to account for rares and commons. Uncommons being anywhere from zero to 50 cents. Uh, maybe a dollar if they're really good, but... Besides the point, uh, most of the super rares in here are not very expensive. We've got X-Rakes at about $2 a copy. Uh, we've got Doflamingos at about $4, $5 a copy. We have um, Ishos at about a dollar or two a copy. And then we have Sabos at about 5 to $6 a copy. So uh, that is about 8 10 $21, 35 maybe. And then you account for all the rares and commons, you're probably paying right about 50 bucks for this deck list, which I don't think is too shabby if I do say so myself. Let's go ahead and do a quick rundown of the deck list. If you want to see a little bit more in depth, go check out that deep dive from yesterday. However, we're just going to do a quick run through. So we're on four X Drake, four Dofi, four Rosanate, four Baby Five, four Monet, four Ryuma, four Suru, three Isho, four Virgo, four Branu, two Sabo, three Sengoku, four Tashigi, and two whoever wins this war becomes justice. So uh, how about we go ahead and jump into a couple games and see if we can't take home a dub. One thing I want to mention before we jump in there is just a disclaimer. Uh, this is just a building block that I want to provide for people who are trying to play on a budget. Like I said, trying to keep a list under $50 is very helpful for a lot of people who do not want to spend a massive amount on the game or who are struggling to want to get into the game because there is that paywall. So uh, making a list that is cheaper than $50, I believe helps. And then if you want some extra inclusions on what you could include to make this list a little better and more competitive, I'll be including that at the end of the video when we take one more look at this deck list. So uh, like I said, just kind of use this as a, build, a base, a building block. And then if you want to invest more and play more of this game, use this and build onto it with other cards. We'll talk about those at the end of the video. All right, y'all, we're going to go ahead and hop into this game. But before we do, I want to shout out Dueling Guard. If you haven't heard of Dueling Guard, they're the best TCG accessory company on the market. They make high quality anime inspired TCG accessories such as deck boxes, binders, and play mats. If you haven't seen them before, they're absolutely beautiful. Go ahead and check out the link in the description and use code GUMGUMTCG for a discount at checkout. What? You haven't heard of Dueling Guard? Dueling Guard is the best TCG accessory company on the market. They have high quality deck boxes, binders, and play mats made for people who enjoy playing and collecting trading card games in style. They have tons of designs based off of fan favorite animes such as One Piece, Bleach, Full Metal Alchemist, and many more. They hit the ground running earlier this year making high quality TCG accessories with beautiful designs that have sold out many times, so if you haven't picked up any of their products, make sure to do so before they sell out again. I have a few deck boxes and playmats from them already and can attest to how they don't cut any corners when it comes to quality, performance, and design. I highly recommend their products and use them every time I play cards. Be sure to check the description below for a link to their site and use code GUMGUMTCG for a discount at checkout. All right, y'all, without further ado, we jumped into a game with Black Luffy, Black Yellow Luffy, and we're going to choose to go second here. So, uh, unfortunately, we can't play against just 06 decks, but we can play uh, on the sim with this leader. The, we have to play in the Eastern format, which is up to EB. Uh, we're going to keep this hand. I do like the Baby 5 here. That's going to help us out a little bit later. Uh, I haven't played against these three brothers decks very much, so I'm a little frightened. I know that they get very big and very bu uh, buffed up by the little fellas, especially Luffy being able to bring back multiple off of uh, Moria and then become like a 9k leader every turn. Uh, very, very scary. However, I'm hoping we can uh, get some good value in here off of uh, this baby five. So let's see if we can't find something good to grab. 
Uh, I do like the Virgo. I do want a 2K in hand. So we're going to take that and we're going to pass back. Uh, like I said, I kind of do this series just to see what this deck is capable of. The, the goal is obviously to win when you're playing a game, but the goal of this video is not to win, but just show you the kind of things that a budget list like this can do, you know? Uh, winning would be nice. If we don't, that's all right. I just really want to highlight the deck and show you what it can do. All right, so he's going to go in for three here at our baby five, and we're really not too worried about it. We got a different search off of it. I would like to save it, but I'm not going to defend against two, two attacks with that. Um, <clears throat> so he's going to go in for 7K here. He's not going to do anything else this turn. Um, yeah, I mean, he's not doing anything else this turn. 5K, I'm not too worried about it. I'll go ahead and take it, and he's going to pass to me. So... I mean, yeah, there's not too much to do here. I, I, I believe the obvious play here is to just go attacking in, play our Ryuma, pop the Garp, and pass. So we're going to attack his leader for five. And uh, we want to attack his leader, see if he hits a trigger or something, something to play itself maybe uh, before we do anything. Because if it was, then we could rest that and pop that, and it'd be better than the Garp, then we want to do that, of course. So we're going to do that, pop that Garp, get a nice body on the field, and pass it back to him. So now, I believe around now is when this Luffy deck starts becoming scary. They're starting to get access to their five cost. They can pop stuff. They can um, start defending. Uh, it, it, it can get pretty scary pretty fast. He's going to hit for five, and I do think we want to stick this Sengoku so uh next turn so i'm going to go ahead and toss out a blocker here i'm going to toss away this uh monet i believe that the rosinante is a little more valuable yeah so he's got a blocker on field now <clears throat> love that sabo we're playing that sabo actually so um unfortunately we can't blow it up we don't even have something to blow it up with yet but uh, we can try to get in there. And we're just going to go for sixes because he has a 6k blocker. We don't want to go for seven and then a five where he can just block one of them and defend the other. Uh, we're just going to go for two sixes. So let's go six. And then let's go six again. Uh, just giving him all these cards doesn't feel good. Yeah, I know he's going to take all of them. I know that how this deck plays. They go down to zero life and then they just start stacking these fives into their life. And then they'll just play them. Um, and they'll just be loaded up with Sabo blockers and stuff like that to defend themselves. So, uh, I know he's just going to keep taking these life cards. We're going to go ahead and throw it on our Sengoku to maybe be able to counteract some of his blockers and stuff like that. Being a 6k helps us beat through these Sabos. Um, and I think it's just going to help minus costs. We can rest some of them, get in there a little easier, but this, uh, black yellow Luffy is actually very strong. So he only had one life left. He just took it to know what it is. Uh, and then he did not return them. He did not add it back. So he's just going to keep it so that then he can use his effect. Trash card, stack the two aces. And then he's going to play two aces. Two of the little ace. Watch. Yep. And then he's going to rush me down for seven, seven, and then nine. That's what this leader does it gets really aggressive he's gonna kill that ryuma and i mean there's not much i can do about it i'm not really too worried about it uh, i don't have anything to ko with ryuma there's nothing rested so one seven we are gonna take and then we're gonna defend the other one we don't want to have to take both so with no we're gonna counter out with i would hold this blocker maybe it is a good decision to hold this blocker yeah we're just gonna give him eight I don't want to pitch that brand new, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And I mean, he's a 9k leader. That's the problem now is that his leader is so strong um, and he's got these big bodies on field when we're only sitting on one established body. I mean, our best bet would be able to be to be resting the Sabo. But even if I do that, um, say I did a Suru, played it, rested Sabo, and I put the rest of my Dawn on my leader. Uh, and this in Goku, so like three here and then the rest here, that would be one 9k swing and another 9k swing. And he's countering out of that all day long. Um, unfortunately, I think we're just in a bad position where we're going to have to play some blockers next turn. 
I wish we had another Ryuma. We could KO one of these aces. But the other thing is next turn he can just do it again. That's the scary part. Um, yeah, I can't even hit his leader with my, my dude. So how about we do this? We have minus four to that Sabo. It's fine. We're going to rest the Sabo. Like I said, I wish we had... Uh, Ryuma here. That'd be really nice. But um, I think we're just going to pop the Sabo. Unfortunately, that just gives him access to the Sabo. But uh, not really much we can do. Say five. So yeah, we got a 7k, 7k swing. Yeah, I mean, he's just going to toss it at the 2k for this. Oh, he lets it go. Yeah, he's going to stack it back and then get it to, uh, next turn. I almost said tomorrow. Yeah, let's go ahead and play these and pass. This deck can just be super aggressive and live very, very long. Like I said, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to play two little guys. He's going to pump two of them out from his trash again. And then be a 9k leader again and hit for 779 and be 9k again with another blocker on field but next turn we should be able to rest his leader or keep his leader rested and these aces so that will be pretty nice yep so there goes the trash to stack two luffy and the sabo Sabo. There it is. He's looking for that Luffy. <clears throat> He's thinking. I don't think he found the Luffy. Oh, I lied. There it is. So fortunately, they don't have Rush, but like I said, I mean, we're, we're just not going to be able to do anything. We're not going to be able to kill him because now he's taking out our rest tool, uh, which we're just going to give him. Uh, do we give it to him? Yeah. Yeah, we just give it to him. Nine K, that's annoying, but we'll take eleven K. That's that's fantastic. We'll block that one. And unfortunately, we have to dopey here, but he's still gonna be swinging at us large next turn. I think it's fine though. Free Sabo. Uh, and then, yeah, we can't attack his leader. So we pass. Garp, looking for some more of them little fellas. He's trying to find another one to be able to replace these aces so we can get the rush back. thinking seems like he's thinking long and hard about this <clears throat> He's really thinking long about this. Okay, he took a Sabo. That's also very annoying, because if he plays another Sabo, I mean, that's just two blockers we got to get through then, which don't know if 
we can do. Yep. Is that Luffy hit a buff? Got two left. I'm wondering if he's gonna attack with this other Sabo. We'll give him a block. Oh, interesting. He's gonna use the leader effect. I thought that they went to the trash at the end of the turn. I think I'm thinking of one of the other brother leaders. He's just going to go back up to two life here. That's actually crazy. He is going to attack with the Sapo. Sure. We'll take it. Hmm. Yeah. That sucks, man, because if he didn't do that, we were, we would be able to kill him here. But now it's like... We gotta clear this board somehow, and I don't think it's possible. I think we just lose next turn because of Sabo effect, because we should be able to clear like three of them with the Ryuma. I think if anything, like if I were to play Dofi, I would freeze this, this, and the leader, but then that would leave him with a 7k, a 7k, and 6, and then 10 Dawn as well. And I have no blockers and no life. So my best bet would be play Sabo, play Rosinate, find some more 2Ks, kind of die. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think I just die. Um, let's see if he'll give me this Luffy. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we kind of just lose at this position now. Like, there, there's literally nothing we can do left. Uh, we'll do that. Play a blocker. And then we'll go into this Sabo. And we'll pass. We got 6k counter, two blockers. It's over. I thought that at the end of this turn, if he did that effect, that the, the cards went back to the trash. But uh, I think I'm thinking of something else. And that's just so strong once you've loaded up on stuff on the field. And here he just, he's just BMing here. Um, yeah. This leader is incredibly strong. They just get to play Sabo Blocker every single turn for free, basically, which is one of the other best blockers in the game next to Borsellino. But um, I feel like we were still able to put up a, f a, a decent fight against it. Uh, we just didn't have a lot of removal or uh, counters and stuff that we needed. So we'll give him some counter there. Um, I do think that this leader effect even though it's like restrictive i feel like it's still missing another restriction like it needs something else on there just being at zero life and trashing a card i i think that that's just way too strong but uh that being said how about we go ahead and look at the deck list one more time all right and although that game seemed futile most of the most of the time futile pretty pretty bad shape um seems just like 
we were going to lose from the beginning. I do think that this list still has legs. Um, Ryuma's not very good when your opponent keeps playing Sabo the whole time, but um, I do think that this combination of cards and this uh, deck list can still uh, work just as well as the um, uh, competitive list that we showed off in the deep dive. Obviously, the competitive list is a little better, so I'm going to give you some options that if you want to take a list like this and increase it to make it better, um, I would recommend getting four copies of Gecko Moria out of OPO6. I would recommend uh, investing in uh, two copies of Kuzan uh, because Sengoku is good, but Kuzan is a little better being a 4-5, uh, so you can play it a turn earlier, and you can also get a draw off of it. Um, I think it's just a little better. I'd also recommend two more Sabos. Definitely play maxed out copies of Sabos. Uh, I didn't throw them in here because that would have just pushed us over the edge of $50. Uh, I would also recommend Borsalinos if you have those already. I wouldn't recommend buying $40 Borsalinos, but if you do have Borsalinos, definitely throw them in the list. Uh, I think that it's a great card to include. But with that being said, I think that Perona is a great leader, has a great effect, and has a lot of versatility to it, and that this budget list here is a great base and building block to go off of. Uh, if I were to replace the cards myself, I would replace Monet with the Borsalinos, Sengoku with the Kuzans, Isha with the Morias, um, and then maybe mess around with the 2k ratios and stuff like that. I would make it look closer to the competitive list that we showed off in the deep dive yesterday. So again, if you haven't checked that out, I'll have a link to that down in the description below. And that's really going to cover it for this video today. I really appreciate it. If uh, you all like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe and like the video. It really helps me out a lot. And comment down below. Let me know what other kind of content you want to see or if you want to see more budget lists in the future. Uh, and uh, please go check out DuelingGuard.com. Use my code GUMGUMTCG. There's a link to that down in the description below. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.